Good evening, everybody. It's Lorraine Alternative Homesteading on November 29, 2024, just before 9 p.m. A couple of people had asked um, about Justin. Uh, Justin was the targeted person who shared testimony um, about it's in your ceiling, get a microscope, that there were glints of light. And let's see, it's dated... Um, 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 but anyway, I emailed him to see how he was doing and he's uh, uh, back in September. So there's one of you guys who asked, well, did he find out any more information? How is he doing? So, um, he specifically told me back in September that he was just going to be, he's going to disappear for a little while that, and he gave me his, um, his contact information, you know, in the event of an emergency or whatever. So, you know, this is what happens, you know, when you find s stuff that you shouldn't find. Well, you know, we're being tortured. So a lot of you smart people out there are going to locate things in your house, around your house, sort of like analyzing the sound on audio and discover that it's your neighbor's adult son that shot a fire weapon in your by your front door when you first moved in. Yeah, like that. You know, you find out stuff. Well, anyway, Justin said it was in his ceiling. He said he looked at one of the nano microtechs through a microscope, and he managed to get his hands on a traditional microscope. He looked at it first with 100 times and then 250. 50 magnification and it was just a piece of glass in the ceiling right if that's the case how did it get there i guess it must have been all those glass bottles thrown at the wall and ceiling right was it the, was it in the paint why isn't it painted over just covering the basic bs that he's been fed by people and you can see what appears to be drywall on a few spots around the edges i'm just reading the portion of the testimony back from September, and I'm going to give you an update. Okay, so the update is he sent me some more photos, and I will show you the photos. So just as an FYI, this is what his testimony looked like before, so that you can search for it. I, I will post a link to it, and this was the cover for his testimony. That was what he found in his ceiling. So I've got some updated photos. All right, one second. So now, the photo that I'm going to show you here, uh, let me read to you the explanation. He said, it's a shining light from different angles, changes the color and patterns. At one angle, the black changes from gold with purple lines to clear with a faint hint of purple lines. This could have been something to do with the quantum dot solution or the nanostructure. So I'm going to show you because I took out my other phone <laughs> and um, let me show you what he sent me. One second. There. Do you see that? Do you see that it's changing? As he's moving the light, as he's moving a light, you can see light changing within it. Isn't that interesting? It's on his ceiling. Okay, so there's more. So now here's the next one. It looks very much the same. Actually, let's... Uh, one second, did he record something here? Oh, here, here it is. This is a weird um, app or whatever it is that he's using for the for the images. And of course, I don't, I don't want that.
Yeah, that was not good. Sorry about that, guys. Um, when you guys send me photos and stuff, I really need them more as a direct link or an attachment. Because when you're sending them through other programs like this, I have to exit out of it, go back into it. It, it takes a lot to download on my laptop, so I have to use my phone for it. But um, And plus, I don't want to inadvertently click on any music. So this is what he's saying is Black Nano. Now this is different. This is different than what you just saw. So now this is Black Nano. I'll show you. When the light is shown at certain angles, the blacks give up a gold color with purple lines. And at other angles, it gives the appearance of what appears to be the structure on the inside. So let me show you what this looks like. And it's not moving. One second. Okay, I can't exit out of this. So there's that. Okay, can't get out of it. This is what happens. I'm in this app now, and I can't get out of it. Um, but this is what it looks like. I took a, a photo of it. I downloaded it on my phone so that you could see it better. And this is Black Nano. And here is another one. And you can see like little gold speckles. And then this is a clear one. You see that? Right, like right there. Wait, let me expand that. This is what he's finding embedded in his ceiling. And here's something else. Like, what is that? And you look up close. It looks ge like geometric patterns here. Let me expand it. Look at that. This is what he's finding. Okay, so now I want to read to you a little bit about what this technology is. It's a little disturbing. <laughs> um, but, you know, everything that's happening to us is disturbing. Okay, so it's called Colloidal Quantum Dots. So, of course, I went to chat GPT because it's easy. I said, tell me about colloidal, colloidal quantum dots. How are they made? What companies manufacture them? Who owns the patents? What are they used for? And are they toxic to humans and animals? Colloidal, colloidal quantum dots, Q, CQDs, are nanometer size semiconductor particles synthesized in a liquid colloidal solution. Did you hear that keyword? Semiconductor? Semiconductor. Nanometer sized semiconductors. Their unique quantum mechanical properties allow them to emit light in specific colors depending on their size and making them highly useful in applications requiring precise optical properties. So how are colloidal quantum dots made? Well, there is a synthesis process. CQDs are typically made by a wet chemical process involving the mixing of precursors in a solvent at elevated temperatures. And the key steps are the precursor material is cadmium or lead salts mixed with ligands and a solvent. 
And I'm going to tell you flat out, if you have cadmium and lead in your body, that is highly toxic. You're going to have a very high toxic heavy metals in your body. It's going to make you sick. Heating the mixture triggers nucleation forming nanoparticles. By controlling reaction time and temperature, the size of the dots can be precisely tuned. Common materials are cadmium selenide, which is C-D-S-E, cadmium telluride, C-D-T-E, or lead sulfide, PBS. The less toxic alternatives are indium phosphide or zinc-based quantum dots. For surface treatment, the CQDs are often coated with organic or inorganic ligands or to enhance the stability and tailor optical properties. So what are colloidal quantum dots used for? Display technology displays for televisions and monitors. They provide enhanced color accuracy, brightness, and energy efficiency compared to the traditional LEDs. Uh, they're used in solar cells. They can improve solar cell efficiency by converting more sunlight into electricity, including infrared light. Number three, biological imaging. Their tunable fluorescence makes CQDs valuable for medical in imaging, drug delivery, and biosensors. Biosensors. So these little critters, these little dots, these little toxic dots can be spread anywhere. They can be spread in your house. They can be in your food. They can be in your medication. They can be anywhere. Lighting, high efficiency color tunable lighting for LEDs and other applications. Sensors used in environmental monitoring and chemical detection due to their sensitive, sensitive optical properties. Wow! Sensors used in environmental monitoring. Doesn't that sound like something we just discussed? Doesn't that sound a little bit like what Citizen Sense does? Wow. Used in environmental monitoring and chemical detection due to their sensitive optical properties. Toxicity to humans and animals. Quantum dots made from cadmium and lead can be toxic because these heavy metals are harmful if ingested or inhaled. You hear that? They are harmful if ingested or inhaled. Degradation of CQDs can release these metals into the environment or biological systems. And these criminals are spreading it in our environments. There are safer alternatives Indium phosphide are considered less toxic, though concerns remain about their long-term effects. And then there are toxicity studies. Research indicates that CQDs can cause cellular damage and oxidative stress in biological systems, depending on their composition, dose, and exposure route. You hear that? These quantum dots cause cellular damage and oxidative stress in biological systems, meaning in humans, depending on their composition, dose, and exposure route. Surface coatings and ligands can influence their biocompatibility. The environmental impact. Disposal of CQDs containing heavy metals should, could lead to environmental contamination. Now, I'm wondering if these colloidal quantum dots are in those, you know, lines in the sky. 
What do you think? Leave a comment down below. Do you think they're using quantum dots that contain all these heavy metals, lead and cadmium? The ma major players in manufacturing these CQDs are NanoSys in the USA. It's a leader in CQD technology for display applications. There's Nanoco Technologies in the UK specializes in heavy metal-free quantum dots, which is the id idium phosphide based. In the US, you've got QD Vision, previously significant player in the quantum dot displays acquired by Samsung. And then there's Samsung in South Korea, integrates the quantum dot technology into their TVs and monitors. Some of the emerging players are QD Solar, focused on solar cells. And then Avantama in Switzerland produces CQDs for displays and lighting. The key patents are cadmium-based CQDs. This is the technology behind the traditional dots that has been patented by various organizations, including Nanosys and QD Vision, Indian-based CQDs, is Nanoco Technologies holds significant patent for cadmium-free quantum dots. Then there is a dispute, Samsung versus Nanoco patent dispute. Nanoco has been involved in legal disputes over patent infringement related to cadmium-free quantum dots. Universities and research institutes like MIT, University of California and others have contributed foundational patents. Are CQDs safe? In consumer products like TVs, uh, the CQDs are encapsulated to prevent exposure to toxic materials, making them safer for consumers. Handling them in manufacturing, they must adhere to strict safety protocols to limit exposure to toxic metals during production. The regulations are the use of cadmium in electronics is restricted under environmental regulations such as the EU's ROHS directive encouraging the shift to cadmium-free CQDs. And in conclusion, colloidal quantum dots offer revolutionary benefits in electronics, energy, and medicine, but they carry risks due to the toxicity of some materials used in their production. Companies are actively developing safer alternatives to address these concerns while maintaining a high performance level. If you're concerned about their toxicity, look for cadmium free quantum dot products. So I thought that was really interesting, right? And it's particularly when it, when it comes to the, um, the citizen sense monitoring and the use of sensors. So I look forward to your questions and comments down below. Please remember to hit the thumbs up. It helps the channel grow, get the message out there. And this beautiful angel, this peace angel, is from Linda Russell, Linda's Angel Arts, and it's a, an original mini oil painting.